This is an animation of what you're about to see in this patient's bacterial smear. This is a white blood cell, your body's defense system. It's a neutrophil with a multi-segmented nucleus. The cytoplasm of the white blood cell appears to effervesce or boil. That characteristic distinguishes the white blood cell from the really bad actors, amoebas. In this smear, there is an army of white blood cells forming a barrier. White blood cells always work together to try to protect you, but they're helpless against the amoeba. This is a large amoeba. It is a one-celled animal and a parasite. It's often found in severe periodontal infections. It's about to give birth. This is the nucleus. The white spot is called a vacuole. The cytoplasm does not effervesce. They move by what's called a pseudopod. Or in other words, this blob bulges out in one direction or another, and it slinks that direction. This one will take a nucleus and a cytoplasm and make a whole new amoeba. This is the only video I've seen of an amoeba giving birth. Spirochetes are virulent bacteria. Every species we know causes some terrible disease of mankind. Syphilis, Lyme's disease, ehrlichiosis, or gum disease, just to name a few. They move rapidly with a wriggling motion, which makes them easy to see on the microscope. They look like snakes. They can go in either direction. And unlike most other bacteria, they can bite. They can actually penetrate mucosa, and I've seen them bite their way inside a red blood cell. They live in the cravicular fluid around teeth and also in the bloodstream. They are a very bad bacteria to have, but fortunately they're easy to kill. They can't even stand oxygen because they're anaerobes. Salt or baking soda will kill them as well as a whole host of antiseptics. In my practice I use the spirochete as a barometer of the patient's home care and also my own hygiene department. After a normal cleaning, both at home and in the office, there should be no active spirochetes. Spirochetes show group intelligence. You do not want smart bacteria. Here they have ganged up on a white blood cell. When you take the bacterial sample from the patient, you'll see thousands of spirochetes, all biting a white blood cell. This shows organization. When they get too crowded, They'll all line up on one of the non-motile rods and begin to beat together and make a heartbeat. So they create their own circulation and pack more spirochetes into a smaller area. This smear is almost to that level. When Trevor Lyon first lectured to this academy about the role of amoeba in periodontal disease, I was very impressed. On the following Monday, when I returned to my office, I met a new patient concerned about her rapidly advancing gum disease. What you will see is a short clip of the microscopic sample I took that day. This animation explains what you will be seeing. You recognize the amoeba and the white blood cell. The amoeba appears to stick a snorkel into the nucleus of the white blood cell, and almost immediately the nucleus appears to dissolve and migrate through the snorkel into the body of the amoeba. The white blood cell dies, but in doing so, it will release histamine, which will call millions more white blood cells to the area. More food for the amoeba. These organisms are both small and large spirochetes.
This is a biological smear of a person who is infected with spirochetes, the little snake-looking bacteria. And this is a smear of a person who is effective in their oral hygiene. They have eliminated most, if not all, of the bacteria associated with disease. Moving through the field on the lower left is a trichomonad, a one-celled animal. Often found in severely infected periodontal pockets, it is also a sexually transmitted disease. In the center of the screen, there are two skin cells, and between the two large cells is a white blood cell being attacked by a mass of spirochetes. Spirochetes show group intelligence and will actually attack your immune system. They have the ability to penetrate mucosa. This is called organization. When you see organization, you know the infection has been going on undisturbed for some time. Thus, home hygiene is inadequate. It usually takes several days for them to become organized. Mr. Potato Head in the center of the screen is a very large and active one-celled animal, an amoeba. This is in a sea of spirochetes. And you can see some of the other organisms that cause disease also, spinning rods and small gliding rods. Non-modal organisms are thought to be harmless with the exception of Actinomyces acomatans. There is a large gathering of amoebas, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see one moving on the lower left and many small gliding rods and spirochetes in the background. These amoebas are surrounded by a mat of white blood cells, as is often the case. They produce tremendous amounts of inflammation. The presence of amoeba and large quantities of white blood cells makes the classification of this disease as advanced as it gets. Here is an amoeba that wraps itself around a white blood cell, then grabs onto it and drags it with him. The white blood cell is damaged by that attack and begins to expand in the middle. Effervesce less, and the cytoplasm is almost entirely lost. In the smear also note the small gliding rods and spinning rods. They too are associated with inflammation and bone loss. The amoeba move by putting out pseudopods or false foots, then flowing in the pseudopod motion. Somehow he's grabbed onto this white blood cell and is taking it with him, perhaps for a snack later. These thin stick-like bacteria are called cytophaga or clock arms. They attach themselves at one end and spin around like the hands of a clock. This area shows an infection with large gliding rods. As you move around the bacterial smear, it will differ remarkably from place to space. You can also see some spirochetes in the background. Bacteria tend to grow up in nests or colonies, and this is one with large gliding rod as the predominant organism. The segmented rods are reproducing rapidly, so you know this is a fast-growing colony. Here are some very active large gliding rods. The white spot in the center is an air bubble. These are small gliding rods with white blood cells. Here are some spirochetes again attacking a white blood cell. This is a skin cell on its side and white blood cells. This is a smear of small gliding rods and spirochetes. This is a smear of what it looks like after pretreatment and irrigation with chloramine T. Many agents can be used. This one is inexpensive well tolerated and rapidly lethal to almost all kinds of organisms as long as you keep it out of sunlight. Sunlight destroys chloramine T, so you keep it in a brown bottle. The tools you'll need. Normal cleaning setup with a mirror, Michigan Explorer and probe, and scalers. You'll need a glass slide with a cover slip. 
I've laid the probe and the tweezers beside them because these are what you'll use to make the bacterial sample. A good quality video microscope is essential in enlisting the patient's interest, cooperation, and compliance. I tell them when I take the sample, if it looks like the freeway at rush hour, then they need to kill it. If it looks like Death Valley on a hot day, you're okay. Here's the setup I use. Tray, irrigation, ultrasonic. I'm sure you all have a favorite ultrasonic cleaner. They do a good to excellent job of dispersing the plaque, but first, you have to kill the plaque. Just like a doctor should wash his hands before delivering babies, dentists are just now learning the importance of disinfecting the mouth prior to treatment. Easily done with subgingival irrigation, any kind of water pick will do this. This is a heated Viajet, which is more comfortable for the patient. You'll need a cannula to adequately flush out the pockets. A cannula is a blunt tube with a hole in one or both sides. We bend the cannula about 45 degrees to make it a contra-angle, like the perioprobe. Taking the biological sample is simple, yet critical to finding the infective organisms. Use the tweezers to milk a drop of fresh saliva from the floor of the patient's mouth. There are commercial slide prep solutions made of salt, but saliva is what the amoeba likes best, and you'll find better activity from the amoeba and the bacteria with just a drop of saliva. Take the Michigan probe or some very thin periodontal probe and gently probe the deepest pocket. Look at the x-rays if you have them to pick your spot. Do the four corners of the mouth is what I usually do. Like probing, insert the, the tip to the root, touch the root, and then tease out a sample of the bacteria and place it into the drop of saliva. Repeat this for each of the sites that you sample. Then press the cover slip down firmly and blot off the excess. Drop the sample onto the stage of any good video microscope at 400 power and voila! Be sure to include the patient in the visualization because this is the key motivational tool, self-interest. The first question out of their mouths is, how do we kill that? Which leads directly to the next thing you need to tell them. Home irrigation with an antiseptic. Not on a powerful setting, just thoroughly. I like the Interplaque 10 tuft electric toothbrush because it dislodges bacteria. While you're at the microscope, score the organisms and write down the kind and quantity. Be sure to include the white blood cells because they are a big risk factor for periodontal disease and infection. Also classify the patient. I use a category of 1 through 5. 5 being the highest risk of having had previous periodontal surgery. That accelerates the disease. And then their condition. A is for active. AR is at risk with some of the bad guys still present. And C is controlled. They don't get controlled until there are three sequential checkups 90 days apart with no bad guys seen. At that point, you've disinfected the mouth. At this time, also estimate how many visits it will take you or your hygienist to remove all these organisms and the tartar, or bacterial condominiums, as I like to call them. We do a periodontal chart on every patient every year. That's why we date the latest one on the front of the chart and the treatment plan, so we can tell if they're due for another. Recall frequency for anyone with significant infection or pockets will be 90 days, as that's about how long it takes the bacteria to grow back once you've killed them. A cup of antiseptic in the irrigator, and I prefer chloramine tea, but you can use anything as long as you take another sample at the end to be sure they've all died. Place the cannula just like you would to measure a periodontal pocket, six places around the buccal and lingual of each tooth. You need a vacuum close so the patient doesn't have to taste the solution too much. Just explain there are no yummy sugar tasting antiseptics that kill on contact. A foot controller is essential for using an irrigation tool. This is the smear we expect to see once the patient has been irrigated. Now you can begin to clean the whole mouth with the ultrasonic. It'll dislodge clumps of bacteria and tartar and you can do this over the whole mouth at each visit. If a longer deep cleaning appointment with anesthesia is scheduled, 
One area may be numbed with local anesthetic, but it makes no sense to not disinfect and clean the whole mouth at each visit. Then we hand scale and root plane all the areas. Notice how I haven't said curette. We try very hard not to irritate the soft tissue. It is of no benefit and it increases pain and delays healing. Then we polish, floss, and once more, a final irrigation. The next step is to verify. For new hygienists or skeptical patients, we routinely do a post-treatment smear. I've seldom had a brand new hygienist who could or would kill all the bacteria on the first try. But everyone was able to learn these skills within just a week. It's somewhat shocking how difficult these pesky bugs are to kill at first, but once you've learned how to do it, it's really no trouble at all.